yeah, so Europe's a bit of a mess, basically. <laughs> and the UK is probably not any better. But we do have an, probably an election and in the almost UK, In the UK, in the UK, most likely we will have one next year, but there's two risks. One is the economy struggles and the Prime Minister just can't quite ever bring himself to call the election and it runs out and then we go to January 2025. That's when it has to be held by. We could we could we could see that, I think based It'd on be the a low economy. turnout, I guess. Oh. January middle of January. Yeah, exactly. But the other element is actually it all falls apart much sooner. There's a lot of pressure on the Prime Minister, lots of internal enemies. He's made a lot of enemies. We've done a lot of analysis. We have something called the Rishi ratings, which you can, uh, we, we did quantitative analysis of each Conservative MP. He does struggle with keeping together his own party. Uh, you might not believe it, but there are some, of course, who would like to change Prime Minister again, because obviously if you- Who would we pick this time, do you think? Oh, well, there's still the same sorts of front runners, you know, Penny Morden, Kemi Badenoch, Suella Braverman obviously fancies it. Um, but there is also, you know, Lord Cameron is Lord back. Cameron. Lord Cameron of Chippewa. Well, and, as we talk about in the watch list, at the very first sentence, I think I mentioned. Oh, yes. The, the reappearance of David Cameron is certainly not something we had on our bingo cards for 2023. <laughs> well, exactly. So, how about this? Rishi Sunak steps down, David Cameron becomes caretaker prime minister, and then we get an election. With a Labour win, I assume. With a Labour win.